performance getting up, uh, and I've had the pleasure of seeing this man uh, perform on a couple of occasions. So uh, let's give a big friendly welcome uh, for Dan Ridley Ellis. So a great philosopher once wrote, trees are like human beings. They much prefer company. <laughs> and yet, they still don't come to my parties. <laughs> no, although I may not look like it, I'm actually a bit of a tree hugger. <laughs> I like trees. I think they're great. I'm not sure what they think about me, but I stopped expecting them to hug me back a while ago. <laughs> See, because we stay together for the good of the children. <laughs> No, because we need trees, don't we? We need them for the good of the environment and for the things that they can provide us with, like food and energy and materials, and that's just as true now as it's been throughout history. After all, none of us, none of us would be here right now if our ancestors had not been able to get wood. <laughs> <laughs> they needed it. <laughs> now, I work for the Forest Products Research Institute at Edinburgh Napier University, and we do various sorts of research aimed at increasing the number of trees growing in the forests. And the one thing that all these various sorts of research have in common is that they involve chopping down trees. <laughs> now, a lot of you are probably thinking that that's not very fair on the trees, uh, even if we do give them a 30-second head start. <laughs> but the thing is, if we can create a responsible market for wood, if wood has value, then that encourages people to look after the forests and plant more trees. And that's good, because that way, we can all have wood <laughs> Forever. <laughs> now, I don't know how much you people know about wood, but it comes in two forms. Hard and soft. And the difference is to do with sex. You see, because the hardwoods, the broad leaves, these are trees that reproduce using flowers. You know, just like human beings do. <laughs> <laughs> And your uh, softwoods, your conifers, these are the ones that reproduce using cones, like motorways. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't have big forests by European standards, but we could make better use of the forests that we do have. Now, most of our commercial forestry is based on non-native species, which a lot of people don't like. Foreign trees from Bongo Bongo land, <laughs> North America. <laughs> but the thing is, when it comes to softwoods, we don't have a great deal of choice because there are only two softwoods that are native to the UK. We have the yew, which is very slow growing, and we have one of the oldest yews in Europe, in Scotland. And we have the Scots pine, which we don't make very good use of. And I think we could all like to use our penis better. <laughs> Oh, I should probably explain uh, that the Latin name, the botanical name for Scots pine is Penis sylvestris. We use the botanical names because the common names vary so much. Um, Scots pine is actually one of the most common trees on the planet. It has a very wide natural range from uh, Portugal all the way over to Siberia. Um, there's a consultation left at the moment for Scotland's national tree in one of the recommended ones is Scots pine. You're probably thinking, what? Scots pine isn't already our national tree? Um, but yeah, you're claiming that whole, all those trees, yes, Scotland, we have that. And so, uh, botanical names, the first part is the species, uh, sorry, the first part is the genus, so we have penis, which is pine. Um, actually, that's the same word, uh, but pine comes to us from the French, in, meaning prick. <laughs> Spicy, <laughs> because it is, uh, believe me. This is not an ideal tree for hugging. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you are very, very careful. At the very least, you have to put some clothes on. <laughs> uh, the second part is the species. That's uh, Sylvestris, which is Latin for of the forest. So this is pine tree of the forest, just to distinguish it <laughs> from all the other types of pine tree that there are. Um, actually, I did lie a bit back there. There is one more conifer that's native to the UK, uh, which is the common juniper. 
which comes in two uh, subspecies, the prostrate and the erect. <laughs> uh, but even the erect one is too small to be of any interest for me, um, and therefore I'm ignoring it. <laughs> it doesn't even make very good tofu for you. Um, so, uh, back to penis. Um, the word penis, incidentally, shouldn't be confused with the Latin root for words like pen and pencil and penicillin, which is the Latin word for a small tail, which is penis. So penis and penis, be very clear of the difference, don't get them confused. One of them has an eye in it at the front end. <laughs> and that's the one that I'm talking about. Actually, that reminds me of an idea I had for a joke. <laughs> so an English elm, a Welsh oak and a Scots pine start growing in a bar. <laughs> Probably wondering where my joke is going. I appear to be English, and this is Sterling, and I gather the some history. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing is, I don't know where that joke is going either, because they're trees. We have to wait 30 or 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's the thing about trees, they take a while to grow. In some fields of forest research, you can be retired by the time anyone finds out that you made a mistake. <laughs> and if they find out sooner, well, forests are excellent places. To hide a body. <laughs> so how does the forester working in the past know what kind of wood we're going to be interested in in the year 2013? Um, well that's where my research comes in. See when, it, when I wake up in the morning the first thing I think about is wood. <laughs> but what makes good wood? Well that depends on what you're looking for. See maybe you want something strong. Maybe you want something hard. <laughs> Maybe you want something that lasts a long time. Nail to an outside wall. <laughs> <laughs> now wood is a very variable thing. Trees vary quite a lot. Even within a single species, there is a lot of variation from tree to tree because trees really are like human beings. Some of them are just shit. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in theory, at least, it should be possible to go up to a tree in a forest and say, this one is going to be good for building, or this one is going to be good for fences, or paper, or bioenergy. Now, um, in the past, foresters were mainly just concerned about the size of their wood and how quickly they could get it. But in actual fact, girth is not all that matters. Because if you're planning an erection, <laughs> you're probably interested in things like stiffness. <laughs> stiffness is a measure of how much something bends under load. It's not to be confused with strength, which is how much uh, load something can take before it breaks. Ideally, if you're building a building, you want it to be both stiff and strong. Now, wood is an ideal construction material, as long as what you want to build is a tree. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to build something else, well, there are certain problems that you have to deal with. One of them is that the tree is making the wood. You're not making it to a recipe, so the tree is making it. And that means you have to somehow guess what the strength and the stiffness of that wood is, because you want your buildings to be safe. Now, there is a saying that goes, if the only tool you have is a hammer, all your problems start to look like nails. Now, that's not entirely true because there are a lot of things that you can hit with hammers that aren't nails. I, for example, have a science hammer. This is not it. This is my teaching hammer. No, I don't use this for hitting students. That would be stupid. Turns out that actually makes them forget things. No, but this differs from my science hammer in only one very important respect. I don't have to sign this hammer out of the lab. <laughs> now, here's the science. Because stiffness is something that can be measured non-destructively. And if you measure stiffness non-destructively without damaging a piece of wood, then you can estimate the strength. And that way you can sort wood, sawn wood, logs, even trees, into grades, good and bad. That way you can make your building safe. One of the technologies for doing this is acoustics, because the speed that sound travels through any material is a function of the density and the stiffness of that material. So if you can measure the speed of sound, you can measure the stiffness and, and you can predict the strength. And one of the really simple ways of doing this is simply to bash your wood <laughs> and listen to the sound it makes 
as it resonates. Because what, from that note, if you can measure the size and the shape of the density, you can calculate the stiffness that allowed you then to create the wood. And that is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I hold down a research post at Edinburgh Naval University <laughs> while someone else hits it. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank